Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Shadowgate Classic. When last we left off, we'd entered into Castle Shadowgate to stop the Warlock Lord. Although the Warlock Lord has so far managed to kill us once, using a clever trap with a book. The other two times we died was because we did something silly. Let's try and not do silly things right now, and instead consider entering into this pool with a shark in it. That's under the uh, classification of silly things, isn't it? Let's look around. A lime-covered skeleton stares at you through eyeless sockets. What? The skeleton has something in its hand! It's a small brass key. Let's move into the water, shall we? As you swim towards the skeleton, you feel the jaws of the shark grab you and pull you under. You curse yourself for using your body as bait. Curses! We have perished once more! Even before the life has left your body, the lake will be filled with your blood. We are dead! Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Don't go swimming for that key. It's not a good idea. Let's continue. We want to move back into this room, as the uh, save put us here. So we can't actually swim for it. Maybe we'll find a way to uh, distract the shark, or maybe we'll find another way entirely. This metal door shows significant signs of rust. Well, let's see if it shows significant signs of opening. By actually opening it and not just trying to move into it. The door is indeed open. And there was that um, sound uh, difference when you open a door. Seems to be just something with the actual version of the game itself. Water cascades over a subterranean cliff into a cool, clean stream. There is also a um, doorway here, that it doesn't look like we're going to be getting any access to. The way up this stairway is obstructed by a landslide. We could try hitting the landslide. Pow! Ouch! That smarts. Nope, we're not going to be doing anything with that. However, this stone is almost perfectly round. We should be taking all of these stones. A stone is in hand. Yeah, we want all of these. There we go. There's another stone. They all take up an inventory slot. But we most certainly are going to need them. For, I think, one thing only. But it's always worth picking up everything for a puzzle much later in the game. And I do mean much later. Cold water cascades down a cliff into a small stream. Yep, indeed. But there's this here. It is very dark. But you know what else that also is? You wouldn't know this unless you just tried to experiment. You can't do that. You can do that, though. The walls in this room are much too close for comfort. The damp walls of this eerie cavern are rough and irregular. That is actually a route that we now know of. You wouldn't know unless you basically um, tried to look for it. The, this rock is quite loose. Well, we know how to deal with loose rocks. We punch them! You hit the rock as hard as you can. Pow! The loose rock falls down as if hinged to the wall. There is a bag here. It's a leather pouch. Well, let's open it. Bag one is open. The bag contains three large jewels. There's a white gem, a red gem, and a blue gem. We shall take all of them. We need all of them. There we go. We now have all of the gems. And I'm pretty sure we could take the bag too. Why not? It's not really going to help us that much, but um, there we go. We might need it at some point. I don't think there's anything else in that um, hole in the wall. Nope, absolutely nothing. So that's what we needed here. Pretty sure anyway. Yep, let's go. By the way, you need those items to finish the game. You're standing in a dark underground cavern. Also, that uh, exit, still not there. The 
way is blocked by a landslide, and even with your might, you couldn't clear yourself a path. Or rather, you cannot clear yourself a path. There's actually nothing we can do in this area right now. This subterranean cavern has been carved by centuries of supernatural erosion. Not normal erosion? Well, let's go. Alright, the stones in these walls were probably cut indeed by the hands of enslaved mountain dwarfs. We came from this entrance. What about this entrance? Ah. This long, cold hallway is lined on either side by half a dozen coffins. This is a room you can die in. Let's save, shall we? And let's start opening these uh, various coffins. Let's look at them first. The cold marble coffin lid seals an ancient deathbed. This tomb is sealed with a silver lid. The door is opened. This is actually a door. It's a cold stone coffin. The lid to this coffin is made of solid gold. It must be worth a fortune! This standing sarcophagus is sealed with a dragon scale cover. Well, let's start opening them, starting with this one. The coffin lid is open. A mummy stands silently before you. And that's what kills us. No, no it's not. This is in just, in fact, a, uh, a mummy. This carefully embalmed six-footer stands straight and still. We'll be coming back to you, but not just yet. Let's start opening these other ones. Nothing happened. Also, our torch is running out. What do you want to use this for? No, wait a minute. It's best if you don't do that. Alright, what do you want to use this for? On a torch, then. There we go. The torch is lit. Pretty sure in the NES version you could use the uh, torch on just the torch next to it. But now we have two torches. And while we're here, let's put this torch to use. Torching this mummy. The mummy bursts into flames, leaving behind a scepter among the ashes. We need that scepter to complete the game. So let's grab it, shall we? This jewel-studded scepter is truly made for a king. Well, we shall take it. It's one of the only items that we uh, need in this room. There are a few other things we may need. The scepter is in hand. And now let us save because we found one of the good things to find in this room. There's also a few other things that we could do, like open this one. The coffin lid is open. There is indeed a bag. It's a leather pouch. Well, let's open it, shall we? Bag two is open. Ah, cop coins. Let's have a look at them. Nope, let's uh, actually have a look at cop coins. Hey, wait a minute. This is no gold coin. It's but a brass slug. What a royal rip. Well, let's take it anyway. We need all these coins. Most certainly. And you know what else we need? We might as well take the bag while we're here. Excellent. And now we're going to save again. Because we're going to open the other two doors now. First, we're going to open this one. The coffin lid is open. As you open the tomb, a banshee flies out and emits an ear-shattering scream. You're alright, but it's very hard to hear. That is, uh, not necessarily a bad one to open. We could open it again. And it happens again. Indeed, we are still alright. We won't be alright if we open this one, though. The coffin lid is open. This green slime is quite disgusting. Let's look at it. The green slime is very thick and is warm to the touch. There is a warning there. Let's try to take some. You can't take it. Oh well, let's move past it then, shall we? What's the worst that could happen? You try to pass the slime, but it engulfs your body, dissolving it in seconds. You die instantly. No pain, no nothing. You were slimed. We are dead! Again. 
it's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. That is indeed one of the ones where um, you can actually technically avoid dying if you just don't go forward. There is another way into that room, but for now, we basically have to go back into uh, this room up here. Like this. And because the save system is as it is, we just need to quickly do what we just did. That's okay though, we can just open these two, and set fire to the mummy, very quickly. There we go. Fortunately that doesn't actually uh, make the um, torch go down any further than it already is in terms of it being lit. Let's open this up and very quickly take these coins. It is a substantial, like, amount of time you have once the, uh, tune actually goes that you're running out of time. So we're just going to, uh, take what we can and move on. But first, we're going to make sure we don't die, because that would suck. Where is our... there we go. Death has been averted. Now, let's, uh, save and move on into another room without opening the, uh, room with the Banshee. So, let's move. This way. This room full of mirrors reminds you of the Elven Funhouse at King Otto's Fair. These mirrors are very, very important. Let's look at them. The mirror has a carved oak frame. This mirror throws back a fine reflection. The mirror has a carved oak frame. There are more torches! We can take these torches! Indeed, and we can take this torch too. Excellent! We can also take this broom. Ooh, can't take the floor, but we can take a broom. This broom looks remarkably like the one owned by the Sirens of the Isle of, of uh, Yeklum Irrit. I'll take your word for it, because I've no idea. The broom is in hand. Excellent. Let's save, because this is a room, not surprisingly, but you can die in. First, let's look at this hole. It's very dark. Also, we could move just down here, actually, at this point. And it basically leads us to here. Can we move over here? And there is a, basically that hole there that we can go into. Well, the first thing we should naturally do is go down the hole! What's the worst that could happen? You jump down the hole, and after a couple of moments, hit the floor. We're in a new room! It seems that you have broken both of your legs. It's only a matter of time before you die. Oops. We're dead! Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. I think it's going to be a running theme with this game, that we die horribly. Let's continue. It's put us back here, and we have all of the items. The next thing we can try and do, is hit these mirrors. Nothing happened. Fair enough. There's not a lot we need to do here. Also, this pretty much eliminates the um, idea that you can avoid this slime. So, forget what I said before, don't open the slime-filled coffin, because you can't really do anything if you do. There's one room we haven't yet been into, and it's this one. There we go. You enter a cold room. A stench of flesh and decay pervades the small chamber. You begin to shiver. This room is really cold. Hint, hint on that. Also, I think there might have been a different, uh... You have to open a door before you go through it. Indeed, it's referring to, uh, the trap door there. Let's go and, uh, check here, because, uh... Yeah, I thought it was a different, um, bit of description there, but it wasn't. The room stinks of rotten meat. Let's, uh, take these torches first. Very useful things to have, after all. We need plenty of them. I think we can get over 20 in this game. Let's have a look around. It's a finely crafted wooden door. It's a small hole in the wall, some three inches deep. It's a large pedestal with iron trim. It's a small trapdoor made of polished metal. 
Well, the first thing we're going to do is save, because we're in a new room and we haven't died yet. Let's open this trap door. I know we shouldn't open it, because it'll probably kill us. The door is open. Ah, there's a ladder, though. Let's, uh, go down there. What's the worst that could happen? Death. A broken fragment of a wooden ladder hangs from the opening. As you go down the trapdoor, you realize you took a big step. The fall is quite fatal. Oops. No hint there as to uh, that being a death trap. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Once more, we have died. But now, we shall move back into that room and take what we need. There we go. Let's go and take all that we can. There's a few things we can actually do here. Uh, the first thing we can do is use one of the gems. I believe it is the white gem that we need to use here. Let's uh, just uh, have a look up here like this. Use. There's the white gem. What do you want to use this for? We want to use it here. The gem fits perfectly in the hole. A small crystal sphere magically appears on the stand. That's not small! That's quite big! This crystal sphere is as cold as ice. We want this. We're going to take it. Can we open the pedestal? No. We can open the door, though! Against our better judgement, let's go in to this room. Fear grips you as you enter this hot room. Yes, we are in a room with... Eyes over there, looking at us. Let's save, right now. And let's look at what's here. It's a heavy shield. There are only a few dents in it. Alright. It's an ancient gnome warhammer. This weapon does not show signs of battle. This seems to be a helmet of the sort commonly worn by hobgoblins. The skull looks like it has been dried and cracked by extreme heat. The spear is some seven feet long. The tip seems to be made of finely forged silver. This bone has been picked clean. This pile of gold is worth a king's ransom. The pieces have been melted together. We're not going to be taking those. It seems to be a skull of some unfortunate individual. There is also this. This is an extremely heavy iron-bound chest. It is securely locked. And finally, all you can see are two eyes in the darkness. They seem to be watching every move you make. Well, let's do the silly thing right away. And go say hi! Whoosh! Flames suddenly shoot from the dragon's mouth. Yes, that is a dragon. The dragon's flame engulfs your body. You pay for your curiosity with your life. We are dead. Again. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Indeed it is. But we're not done yet. We can actually do something in this room. Mainly, we can take one particular item. Any particular item, actually. We can take any of them we want. For instance, let's start by taking this torch. Whoosh! Flames suddenly shoot from the dragon's mouth. Looks like we might have picked the wrong item. A dragon's flame once again engulfs your body. You pay for your curiosity with your life again. But we got a torch that was lit by the dragon, and then we died. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here again. No, there is one item that we are most certainly going to take first. Let's go in and take the item that makes sense. The item that we're going to take is the shield, because if there's one thing that can protect us from a dragon's breath, it's a shield. The shield is in hand. 
you raise your shield just in time to block the dragon's flame. Now we can start taking the other items in the room. Carefully. The shield won't last forever. Again, flames spew forth. You use the shield for protection. It's getting hot. You don't know how much longer you can stand it. Let's try and take something else, shall we? The axe, for instance, or the hammer, rather. We need this hammer. Again, flame spews forth. You use the shield for protection. It's getting hot. You don't know how much longer you can stand it. Do you know what we have to do to make sure this shield doesn't melt? Because this shield will melt. Let's see if we can get this shield to melt, shall we? Let's start taking more things, like the helmet. Again, flames spew forth. You use the shield for protection. It is indeed getting very hot. But I'm sure we can take this spear. It'll be fine. The shield melts under the intensity of the dragon's flame. Your body fares no better. Not even your best friend could recognize your burning body. Indeed, the dragon's flames have engulfed our body, and we've paid for the curiosity that we had in taking too many items with our life. Guess what, folks? It was a sad thing indeed that our adventures have ended here. What you need to do, and it's a bit of an odd solution, is you need to go in, take a few items. Also, it's put us in this room automatically um, with all the items still here. We take the shield, which is fine. We raise the shield up to defend ourselves. We can then take maybe a few items. We'll take the helmet. It is indeed getting hot. We'll take the torch. And we'll take... Nothing else. We'll take the hammer. We'll find out the limit of how much we can take. Just that much. To cool down the shield, we move into this room. For this room is very, very cold. And it will provide just enough, um, basically, um, change in temperature. But the shield will be able to endure just that little bit more. Just long enough for us to take, say, this spear. There we go. Why the dragon doesn't just, uh, come out and actually, you know, kill us is another matter. But we're not going to take a chance that the shield will not be able to, um, resist the dragon's breath. So, we leave again, and basically, um, hopscotch our way out of the room, and back, and take one more item. This room is indeed terribly hot. And go and take this skull. I haven't even tried to do something like you, say for instance, the spear on the, uh, on the dragon there. It could work. It actually won't work. Using any weapons on the dragon is a silly suggestion, mainly because, well, it's a dragon. We're here to defeat a warlock lord and not a dragon. We could in theory try to defeat the dragon, but the dragon will just kill us. There are some things that not even we should be um, basically getting involved in. So let's get out of here. One more time we're going to go in, because you can't open that chest at all. We can try opening the chest, it's not going to work though. This room is exceptionally hot. It's the last time we're going to be trying to do something though. We have every item that we need. We could try moving out and trying to open that chest, but the chest is indeed very locked. And we don't have a key that will open it. So, when we come back folks, we've managed to avoid death in many forms. And we've also managed to die in many forms. Surprisingly enough, we avoided the death after only dying. Coincidence? I think not. So when we come back, folks, maybe we'll find a use for that gem that's as cold as ice. Maybe, just maybe, we might be able to use that gem to get a key. So I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.